Last of the methods I want to talk about is what's called a linear discriminant analysis. And this is a, a very nice technique. Again, one of, the, one of these important algorithms that you might want to start thinking about. It has a lot of uh, intuitive appeal. Uh, and so I want to start uh, thinking about how we might construct it and also talk about the MATLAB code that would go with it. Uh, so the classify command is what we're going to build up to, but it's basically built upon a linear discriminant. Uh, analysis. Now, a linear dis discriminant analysis is kind of an interesting concept, and I want to show you uh, what that looks like. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to look over here back at our, I'm going to try to draw some, some data points uh, for us. Bring this up in a minute here. This should be pretty fast. Uh, let's go back to here. Okay, so we had this before, and this is from the last lecture, which is something like this, which is uh, circles, squares, and we want to sort of think about a classification decision. Well, one very intuitive thing to do is to start thinking about how would I basically draw a line or a cut between these things. So the way the, uh, uh, this linear discriminant analysis works is that you can start thinking about how would I project this data down onto a line, okay? In other words, if I had uh, a line, let me, let me actually draw this with this. Uh, and I'm going to have to go to a pen here. And I'm going to get, a, let's see, a red pen. Okay. Okay. So, for instance, what if I projected onto a line uh, that lived right here? So if I took this, all this data and I started projecting it onto this line, notice what would happen. All the greens would be down here, but they would mix, be completely mixed with all those oranges as well. So if I were to plot them all here, all the greens and oranges would be mixed if it was on this line. Which is kind of problematic, because then you couldn't tell the difference between them. However, a line something like this, think about that. If I were pro dropping everything onto a line here, well, if I drop lines on here, all my greens would be down here, and my oranges would be up here. And so there might be this point where I could separate it. So I might have a distribution of the green, something like here, and a distribution of the orange would be up here. So I might be able to draw a decision line right there, saying anything down here is green, okay? So anything down here is green on this side, anything up there is orange. So the ultimate goal then is to draw essentially some separation line in the data, and that was actually not a very good drawing, so let me re <laughs> redo that one. Some kind of, let's, maybe something like that, I don't know. Maybe, maybe that's better. But the idea is that this, there's this line of separation between green and orange, and what I want to do is come up with a principled way to get that line. Well, that line's an optimization problem ultimately at the end of the day, and it's closely related to a generalized eigenvalue problem. We're not going to talk about it here. We'll send you some notes uh, in the course. But I want to just give that main idea. What is the right projection? What's the right line to drop everything onto? Uh, and then we're going to use that line as a discriminant. It's a linear discriminant because it's a line. And it just says, on one side of the line, it's orange circles. On another side, it's green dots. Okay. So that's the concept in the context of something like this. And so uh, let's go back to here where we're going to start programming in MATLAB. Now, uh, in order to do it, we're going to use what's called the classify command. Classify does linear discriminants. It also can do quadratic discriminants. And as the name implies, instead of drawing a line, you draw parabolas through the data, essentially. And sometimes that gives you a much better fit. Uh, linear discriminants are constrained in the sense that only it's a line, but you might have data that you want to draw some kind of curved surface that best separates the data. Okay? And that's a lot of the innovations in the last decade or so. People are looking at ways that how can you extend these, uh, these linear fits to sort of more, uh, more, more interesting curve fitting techniques that allow you to have curved surfaces that separate uh, different classes of data. 
Okay, so in this case, the classify command is going to be what we're going to use. And here's how it works. Uh, it's going to give us some uh, results, predictions on our test data. And the classify command, you send in your test data, you send in your training data, and you send in your labels. That's it. This is a really powerful technique, right? You could just see it's very easy. Test data, train, C train, which is the labels. So what it's going to do is going to take essentially those sets of points. Um, it's going to try to draw the best discriminant between the points using the training data that you give it and the labels you gave it. So right, this here gives you the data, the C train and X train. And then once you have the discriminant, you say, well, how well did I do? I'm going to go back to X test, which is the testing data, and I'm going to go look. Is this a dog or a cat? According to your decision line you drew with some 50 random dogs and cats. Right? And then what's going to give you out is here is a prediction, which is your test data, which remember the first 30 are dogs, the next 30 are cats, and I've labeled them as ones and twos. The pre is going to come out. We can also just plot it in a bar chart. And if it's perfect, it should be ones. The first 30 are ones. The next 30 are 60 or, or two. Okay. Um, so let's take a look at what it does. There it is. So this is. It should be all ones, all the way to 30, and then all twos. And you can see I've made some mistakes. I have four cats wrong and about four dogs, five dogs wrong. Okay. So not bad. It did a pretty good job. It actually at least from this one snapshot, looks better than what we got from both Gaussian mixture models as well as Naive Bayes. But remember, this was a single realization. You must cross validate. Okay? You can even just run it again, see how well you can do again. Here's now the second time through. Now I got five cats wrong over here. One, two, three, four, five. I don't know, seven dogs wrong. But still, not so bad from such a simple thing we've done. Here's another run of this. So you see, each time you run it, it can be quite a bit different. And this is just because it's really subject to your training set that you picked randomly. If you pick really, really big training sets, this variability goes down, right? So here, our training set is only 50 cats, 50 dogs. If we were to have 1,000 dogs and 1,000 cats, you would see much less difference trial by trial, okay? But that's it. Very simple, classify, test data, training data, labels. So now you have three new techniques from yesterday, from the last lecture you had uh, k-means, which was unsupervised, you had k-nearest neighbor, which was just supervised, which are also two of the top 10 algorithms. Now you have naive Bayes, which is a supervised, you have Gaussian mixtures, which is unsupervised, and now this linear discriminant, which is a supervised. So you have five techniques in, in total for doing this clustering, classification, and regression. Mm -hmm.